Welcome to Data Structures and Applications. This is Dr. Esnanda Gopalan continuing my lecture on this particular subject. Now this session I will just discuss about the various programs uh, which means the data structures which we have already studied uh, and uh, uh, how to execute the programs corresponding to uh, all these data structures. In fact, we have shown about stack, uh, infix to, you know, uh, suffix or postfix conversion, suffix evaluation, etc. Uh, in in previous sessions. So I will just dedicate this session only to continue the discussion on the same, but uh, considering uh, other data structures as well. So this is going to be purely on the execution of the programs. So we will limit our discussion uh, only to that, but not uh, you know explaining the details of the algorithms or the methodology of various data structures, how they have uh, been designed. For instance, Q, uh, NQ and DQ are the two functions or operations. Uh, the concepts behind all these have already been discussed, so we will not waste time on that. So straight away, let me just go to the Visual Studio Code. Uh, let me just share that screen. Yeah. So this is the tool which uh, I'm going to use to demonstrate the working of various data structures, uh, starting with uh, normal Q. You can see here Q.cpp. That's the program which has been opened. So quickly we shall uh, go through this program. So the maximum size of the queue is four. It's limited so that we can show the exceptions like overflow and underflow. So we have two functions here, NQ and DQ. NQ is for adding an element into the queue. DQ is for deleting an element from the queue. So display is a function which actually displays. So the program is written in C bar C++ and uh, again I have explained about visual code. So we are using GCC compiler in this and a, a debugger as well, you know G++ or CPP. Deb debugger is actually G++ debugger. So there are a lot of settings which need to be done for Visual Studio code. Um, for instance, JSON files need to be I'll just show you that. Yeah, launch.json and uh, task.json. So these two files have to be configured in order to debug, uh, you know, the C++ programs. So there are three functions here which need to be explained as done in the algorithmic point of view. So we have a, a, a an array called Q which holds the elements. So it's a normal Q and static. So two pointers uh, which are required for operating the queue, front and rear, you can see here, <coughs> both are declared here, F and R. Element to be inserted into the queue is E. So other variables, local variables, which are required in order to show the demonstration of this by, uh, you know, in the form of a menu, like we have insert, delete, display and exit. So as usual, we just display, I'm sorry, initialize the pointers F and R, F being zero and R being minus one. So before adding any element into the queue, we just increment R and then add the element. So the main function, uh, it's a while loop which keeps displaying the menu every time. And uh, the case one is adding. Uh, so the function NQ, which actually uh, takes up this uh, items that means the actual elements to be stored in the queue and uh, pointers rear pointer is enough because we need to just increment and then add the element to be added is e and this is ampersand because the reference parameter uh, once we add an element r is actually incremented so that we can get the latest uh, value of r back to this main program and similarly, we have case two where it's uh, deletion and uh, we have both uh, F and R which will be returned. So it's a wide function, this is a function which returns. 
So uh, supposing, uh, you know, if uh, the DQ returns minus one, we know that uh, it's an underflow. That means no element is there. Otherwise, we just delete the, I mean, show that element, deleted element. Display, we need F and R because display is a function which actually displays all the element elements starting from element pointed by F and uh, up to the element pointed by R. So that's the total contents of the queue at any point of time. This is for exit. So anything else, one, two, three, four, other than this value, it becomes an illegal entry. Well, so the two functions which are uh, the which correspond to the operations of the queue. So the NQ, enter queue, because we have sent ampersand here, so it's a pointer variable R and element to be added. So check for the overflow condition. So if R is max minus one, it's an overflow. That's understood. Otherwise, you can add the element after incrementing R. So whenever you want to access the pointer variable in C, you have to use star. So that I think you already studied. So increment R and then add the element. So automatic reference parameter R automatically gets updated even in the main program. And when it comes to deletion, again, F and R are required. Both might get affected because when there is only one element, that means F and R will be pointing to the same location you can see here, in which case we can understand that there is only one element in the queue and need to be reset back to the original initialization that is F equal to zero and R equal to minus one. Otherwise, you just increment F. So that's exactly what is done. And uh, underflow condition as per the uh, literature, what you explained, PPT, uh, this condition is checked. And uh, otherwise, it's not an underflow. So just uh, retrieve the element pointed by F. And uh, resetting is done in case where you have the last element being retrieved. Otherwise, we need to just advance F so that it points to again the filled element, next element in the queue. After this, you return temp. So display is actually this where, uh, you know, we have uh, to display from F to R. So we need just a for loop, starting from F up to R. So when no elements are there in the queue, with this condition F is greater than R, nothing to display. So you can just say queue empty. Remember, empty is different from underflow. Empty happens when it is displayed. I mean, display function is called. Underflow is when DQ, deletion from the queue is called. So that's the basic difference. So now we shall execute this using this debugging uh, command. So I'll get a different, yeah, different window in which uh, I have the first menu. So let me just show first display. No elements are there. Uh, queue is clean. So you can see queue empty. And uh, let's say two, that is delete, no elements are there, so underflow should come. Yeah, Q underflow message is displayed. Now I'll just add elements, two elements I'll just add, one, one and two, two. So currently the Q has two elements. We can just display and show it. Yeah, two, two is added after one, one. So the first one is the front, the last one is the rear of the Q. So let me show how the overflow occurs. So I'll just add some more elements. Yeah. Now there are four elements and now I'll try to add one more because the queue size is four. Yeah, now you can see that it's an overflow because I can't add fifth element into the queue. Now I'll show you deletion. So after delete, uh, uh, you know, deletion of uh, the element which has been added, uh, the first, I mean foremost, as per the FIFO policy, so 1-1 one, one was the one which was added at the beginning, first one, so that will be deleted first. So you can see here the remaining elements in the queue are 2-2, two, 3-3 two, three, three, and 4-4. Four, four. So can I add one more now? Because there, there is a space actually, but it won't allow because it's a normal queue. So I'll just try to add 9-9. Nine, nine. It will simply say that it's overflow because R is pointing to the max minus 1. So now display, yeah. Now I can keep deleting 2, 2, 3, 3, 4. Now if I try to delete, underflow. That's it. 
OK, so now it's reset back because all elements are deleted and Q is empty. So now it should be able to add. So one. So now you can see that one. So that means when no elements are, are there, that all elements have been deleted and uh, will reset the pointers so that it adds fresh Q. OK, so this is the working of the uh, normal queue. So let me just go to now. Circular queue. Right, so you can see here the circular queue again, enter, delete and display. So in this case, we use formulas uh, for addressing F and R and uh, initialization F equal to zero or equal to zero. So this is different from the normal queue. And the menu, of course, remains same. The only change we require is the calculation of the pointer values F and R. So in this case, entering, uh, uh, we check for the overflow case. Otherwise, we will just, uh, you know, calculate the rear value. It's not R equal to R plus one. So we calculate using the mod function max as we already said because it should work on a wraparound fashion. So once we calculate the address of then we can push this E that means element to be added to the Q pointed by R. Similarly deletion uh, check for uh, underflow and else calculate the value of F using this formula again and store this in temporary and return that or you can simply say return. So that means entering and deletion happens here. Now display, of course, uh, uh, you know, because it's in a circular fashion, so we cannot display like F to R, right? So when F and R are the same values, zero actually, we say that it is empty, nothing is there. Now, otherwise, we have to, <clears throat> we have to display all the elements starting from the current value pointed by i. So that address we can calculate using again mod because you know f also takes over r and it keeps rotating. It's, it's, it's a circular one and hence we need to calculate that. So calculate this address and print that value and uh, next time you know when it goes to the while loop then again calculate the next address. For instance, it could be two, uh, then two plus one, three. So as long as it's within the limit of the max, it will try to print the current value pointed by I. So this can be repeated until it reaches the R. So it can even go on a wraparound fashion. So that's why we have this formula being calculated. We cannot say that there is an end here. There is no end. Whenever it is circular, there is no end. There is no starting, there is no ending because it's a circular fashion. So let me just execute this and show you the working of this circular queue. Yeah, now this is my circular queue. The menu is same. Now we should demonstrate that even if I delete, I have some space that space should be utilized okay so let me just demonstrate that one one three three four four or five five it's overflow just similar to the previous one but supposing if i delete an element from this circular queue now like say 11 is deleted now i have space because i have three elements one space is there i should be able to add now Okay, so I'll just try to add 99. See now it's accepting. Now you can see that 99 is the last element added, which is uh, after 44. And all locations are utilized. So now I can show 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, and 19. It's empty now. I can reuse it. So circular queue is better than normal queue uh, for the simple reason that we can utilize the space whatever is available in the circular queue unlike normal queue okay so now we shall take up 
the third one circular queue with dynamic variables so we have this now uh, so whenever it is full we should be able to uh, you know allocate memory dynamically and then uh, the element should be added it's not limited to four or five like static okay so we have a structure here for the element so i just have one member here so you can have an object kind of thing you can add any more uh, any number of members here and uh, so the, this is not just an integer this time so it is an object kind of uh, environment so it is a structure variable so element so that is my queue now uh, and uh, adding into the queue and deleting deletion from the queue and i have a function called queue full which actually takes care of allocating dynamically and extending the memory whenever it's full queue is full so that's why uh, we have demonstrated even in the stack case, dynamic uh, capacity is one and uh, increase the capacity doubling all that so i'll show you that function so now the uh, because it's a circular queue so i just uh, initialize f and r to zero now coming straight away to this so the only difference between the circular queue normal and the dynamic one is the queue full you know it's not overflow so queue full will be called so when f is equal to this we normally say that it is full but now we call a function so that we get more space so it goes to this function so this is the function now we have seen that copying work has to be done twice i think you can recall the ppt slides corresponding to this you have to actually <coughs> uh, adjust the pointers after making two copies you can see here this is the two copying from the original one by allocating temporary memory locations that's a new queue you can see here so the memory is obtained using mlec by doubling the capacity two into capacity the size of the queue so we get a pointer uh, of the type element so that new queue now will point to the uh, uh, memory being allocated newly or dynamically and uh, once you do this copying adjust the pointers f and r and uh, next time you know capacity will be doubled okay so any 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 uh, temporary dynamically allocated variable should be freed for avoiding dangling reference etc so that's the statement freeing of this and uh, once you get this memory now i can actually add an element e after getting the address for or new address for or so the address adjustments have been done using queueful so i don't declare it as uh, like uh, overflow and wind it up uh, but uh, we just get the memory allocated and uh, add the element underflow that means in the delete queue same thing so no not much of changes here display almost same except that max we use the capacity because capacity keeps changing every time when the queue becomes full i think we can execute this uh, it will work uh, okay let me just do that for you so i should be able to add any number of elements so one So I have now six elements. So seventh one, eighth one, ninth one. So any number of element because dynamically I keep getting my uh, MLAC because of MLAC, and hence I think deletion also so you can show the same way uh, because it should work, and uh, hence uh, not. making any restriction on the number of element that you could add into the circular queue so dynamically i can get the memory being allocated
Right, so now we shall move on to the next program. Priority queue. So again in priority queue, we use one pointer called uh, index initialized to minus one before adding an element, increment index and add. And uh, ascending priority queue, descending priority queue. That is uh, also called as min heap and max heap that you will study later, extracting the minimum element in the given set of elements. Max heap actually uh, extract the maximum element from the given set of elements. OK, so here the menu is same except that you need to add or enter into the priority queue. So the overflow is it should not go beyond that. It's not circular, so it's flat. So max minus one is the normal checking. And uh, if this condition is false, we just uh, increment index and then add something like stack where you increment top and then add. OK, now deletion is a bit tricky because we need to find out the max or min and uh, swap, you know, all that you can recall. So you can see here that uh, the underflow case is that when index equal to minus one, no elements are there in the uh, priority Q. OK, so K is the current uh, max position. Or the largest element position and if you find. After going through from the second element onwards, if anything greater than this, you save that position. OK, so that's why you can see here one two, up to index up to the end or current index because index also keeps changing. So if the element pointed by I is greater than the element pointed by K. So one and zero. The first element being pointed by I is nothing but first element. Means actually second element index is one and element being pointed by K is the zeroth element current maximum. OK, so if this first element is greater than the zeroth element, you save that position. Else you go to the second element that is I equal to two. Again, compare with the current max, etc. I think this is a very simple for loop which you would have already written to find max or min uh, in your fundamental, uh, you know, programming. Right. So once you get the position of the uh, biggest or the largest element, then we can actually swap it with the element pointed by index. You can see here. Before that, I just save it in the temp because. I need to return this. So swapping is done and index is decremented because now that the element is gone. Uh, recall again our diagram and you return temp. So deletion is actually based on priority, not first come first third. So we need to find the largest one because largest one is the highest priority and uh, adjust. I mean swap with the last element point of index actually and decrement index so that uh, we get the balance elements in the priority queue and return the temp, which is the largest one. Display of course is very simple that you just start from zero to index up to index inclusive of index. So that is your priority. Queue. So we shall just uh, execute this. I'll just add elements at random so insert because. So currently I have 34, 23, 9 and 4. Maybe I'll just add one more. 25. Oh, it's overflow because I've just limited to only this many so currently I'll just uh, delete. OK, now 34 is deleted because that is the largest. So now which element should be uh, deleted? It is 23 because the highest priority among all these three is actually 23. So that should be deleted. You can see there. So the balance elements are four and nine. Now nine is the largest, so next priority goes to that, so it's deleted. So among the elements available, the largest one is found and deleted uh, from the priority queue. So deletion is based upon 
capital value where the larger the higher the priority okay now we shall move on to the next program fifth one multiple stacks right so multiple stacks it's almost similar to the single stack uh, program but here we need stack id that's very important and we also require uh, arrays for top and bottom so items it's okay same now as usual so maximum memory and maximum number of stacks so maximum memory divided by maximum number of stacks will give me the number of stacks which i can maintain for example if max memory is 15 and maximum number of stack is 5 as we discussed already 15 by 5 three elements will be the maximum size for each stack okay so we need arrays for both the top and bottom because for each stack we need a top and bottom so the stack id is very important so you can see here there is a variable which is maintained for that otherwise it's very simple okay and initialization has to be done uh, as again we have demonstrated uh, i'm sorry shown earlier so top of zero zero stack is minus one uh, uh, remember that stack id starts from zero so zero stack is the first one starting from first stack we can just initialize both top and bottom pointers okay now this is main program as usual now we will concentrate on push and pop so uh, the exception cases of overflow is nothing but you can recall the diagram where the current stack id that top is equal to the next stacks bottom that means it is you know overflow because it has grown that much else you can just add the element to that uh, id you know top of i so i stack so you can see here the parameter being passed to the push because i have kept items and uh, this one global variable you can see items is good that also can be passed as a parameter but uh, to reduce the number of parameters here that is shown as a global variable so here the i indicate the stack id so you can see here that whenever you want to push the element into the stack now you first get the stack id which stack you want to push the uh, element so supposing if uh, the user gives a legal value for the stack id you can just say that illegal otherwise you can pop or push sorry here pop, pop or push anything so both for push and pop we need the stack id because you you have to know from which stack you have to delete or which stack you need to push the element so here top of i is nothing but top of that stack because top is an array bottom is an array etc so items is an array where the item value you know it's added or pushed after incrementing the i stack top pointer similarly before deletion check for the underflow so this is underflow and uh, decrement of course after retrieving the element this is a post decrement you can see this is a pre increment because push is increment top and then add uh, popping is you can pop and then decrement it's a post so this one uh, display is very simple from top to top of uh, i plus 1 stack id because it you know top pointer actually uh, is uh, normally position one below okay so uh, sorry uh, uh, it displays this but uh, the uh, stack empty case is this condition that is top of any stack uh, supposing if it's equal to bottom of i uh, as per the diagram you can say that it's empty but otherwise it's top to bottom it's very simple top to bottom right so we have uh, three important uh, arrays top bottom and items items to store bottom to bottom pointer for each stack top is top pointer for each stack so let us just execute this and show how 
this multiple stack really works. Okay, first one is you can have any number of stacks. So I'll just say total stacks to be create uh, say okay three. Let's take and uh, it's our stack ID. So I, uh, supposing if I give some eight, you can see the stack ID is illegal. Supposing if I give valid one, this for sorry insertion that is push. So I'll just give zero stack and followed by the element. So one one or let's say uh, yeah one one. And uh, again push this time I'll give stack ID one and two two. Stack ID two then three three. So now display stack ID zero that's one one. Three stack ID one two two can see there again display stack ID 2 which would be 3 3 so it's there right so we can easily pop again stack ID need to be given let's take 2 so 3 3 will be popped you can see there and I try to pop from the same underflow because no elements are there so every time when you want to add an element I mean push an element you just give the stack ID in the element to be pushed Whenever you want to delete an element, you need a stack ID and then just leave it. You will get the element popped. So this works fine for multiple stacks. Similarly, uh, we have multiple queues. So this is almost uh, same as this you can see here, except that entering and deletion is based upon the queue. Enter into the queue and delete normal queue, not circular queue, normal queue. OK, so now we have a maze problem. So let me just skip that you know, execution. This is very important here. Uh, this again, you need to recall our earlier discussion. Uh, the, the coding is done based on the concepts of the uh, positioning of the rat and next row and column to be determined for the rat movement and the direction and the movement, uh, uh, you know, the values for horizontal and the vertical one will be calculated based upon starting from zero, that is north and, uh, you know, rest of the directions. Okay, so we have uh, the entry point for, it's all fixed now, it's defined. So entry point for the rat starting row and column is 1 1 and the board size I just taken as 6 by 6 array and exit point for the uh, rat is actually 6 6. So bottom right corner top left corner for the entry. So this is your vertical and horizontal that's offsets for the moment and uh, this is the a row column and the direction that is element. So you have uh, to use stack here. So we have push and pop functions because you need to remember, you know, coming back. If suppose you end with the dead end, then you have to come back. So pop the latest address so that you can opt for some other directions. So we need uh, two while loops. I'll come to that before that. This I fix the board like zero indicates the opening, one indicates the closure or the wall. So you can see here the answer is very much evident. Zero if its starting point is this, so it actually comes like this, like this, like this, like this, you know, something like this. So some diagonal, some horizontal, some vertical, like up, north, all that. Well, these are some initializations for the stack and offset movement. I think this is a lookup table. And next row and next column. These are the two variables required to calculate. And the current uh, position of the rat is fixed as row column direction. You can see here minus one for north. So we start from there. OK, now. Um, so while yeah, this is the two while loops which uh, I had mentioned so maze the structure sorry the array 
is a maximum row minus one column that is six minus one five and again five by five. So which is three by three, sorry, five by five array. It's okay. So now we have two while loops. So this while loop uh, outer one is that stack should not contain any elements. That means supposing if you have pushed some addresses and you want to try all those things, so you should be able to do that by using this top. So as long as top is uh, not equal to minus one, that means you have some elements in the stack. So you can keep going because we already pushed some elements. You can see here the current position of the rat. So something will be there. Obviously it will allow me to enter into the while loop. And if I've tried all the possibilities, <clears throat> then this will no longer be true and it will get exited. Now the inner while loop is used in order to try all the directions because for example north when you want to try it could have a one it might be one in which case you have to try for the next direction that is one. So directional the, 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 this one cur dot that is current uh, position of the cursor of the directions may have to be tried uh, for all eight uh, directions. 0 to 7 and hence uh, this while loop will do that job and uh, next row next column will determine movement of the next uh, position of the rat and uh, uh, it will as per the method which we have already explained in the PPT so it will try to it will try to uh, find out whether there is some possibility of for the rat to move provided there is a zero because one indicates that it is uh, a, a, a wall so that it cannot move. Now if it cannot move then it has to be pushed for that particular address. Otherwise you just take to the next position and you have to also check whether you have reached to the exit point or not. Okay exit point or not. So and another important point is that all pos um, all legitimate movement of the rat uh, is to be shown as an output. Right. So how do we show that we just put star for the movement of the rat. Now otherwise it is zero. So we have some conventions used here. I'll just show you the output then you'll come to know. Uh, so we have uh, the numbering here that three means that it is a legitimate uh, movement for the rat uh, for the next position. So put a star here. That's why you can see here we have uh, altered the maze information itself that it is three. So I'm going to just print maze itself as an array, but the, this uh, array will now hold uh, star or zero kind of thing. So star means is the moment, zero means it's not. So the entire path can be actually shown as an output. Uh, maybe when I execute you will understand. But there are possibilities that there may not be any exit path for the rat from the given starting position because all could be ones for instance, all may be a wall. So in which case you should also print that there is no path. So you can see here there's no path if you have tried all possibilities. So at the end of each of this loop, you try for directions. So next direction. So you started with say zero current. Then you can try with zero, one, two and so on. And the outer while loop, you can <coughs> try the row column as the next one so that uh, you know, as long as the stack is not empty, you can keep going. Okay, push and pop are the two functions as part of the stack. So let me just execute this for the given board or the maze position. So you can see here that there exists a path and uh, the path is shown using uh, star remaining locations are not affected this original value 
So the starting point of the rat is here. So it can take, these are all zeros actually, as per the program, means the input. So it can come like this, like this, like this. It has gone like this. Now you can see here, there's a diagonal moment, right? Now instead of coming, it could have come like this only, but it has gone like this because we always try from here, north. So when it was here, for instance, it has seen like this is one, this is one, this has already been tried, say this left is one, like that right is one, this also is one, etc. So it, it, it keeps trying this way, you know, directions, and if it finds a path, it will simply take. So that's why it has gone here, and uh, it has found that uh, all these three are ones, and there is a zero here, and hence it has taken, not necessary to try the rest. So it will come here now, it will again start from here. Since it, this is uh, uh, one, so it cannot uh, move, and hence, it goes to the diagonal one. So you can see here it has gone and all these are zero. So it has come here. So don't think that it is an optimal solution. It's not an optimal solution because we have a fixed uh, way of uh, trying out all directions starting from a particular direction. So we don't know where the zero is. So whenever when you get a zero, probably it can take that as my next row and column. So Still, it has found the path. So the stars indicate the uh, Z, you know, row and column values for the rat movement, and it can exist. I mean, sorry, exit. And uh, you can try it all once, and it will not be able to show you any path. So that is okay. I'll just close this. Yeah, that's the working of uh, maze problem. Well, I think these are the topics which we have discussed and the rest of the data structures have already shown in the previous PPT and uh, uh, each and every function is coded, the entire program of course is coded in C bar C++, mainly scanner printable used and uh, even in the exam if uh, functions are asked or the programming is asked easily, you can use this. And uh, I'll be able to share these programs, of course, through VTU, e-learning uh, portal. And you'll be able to download this code and execute, provided you have a proper editor. So I advise Visual Studio Code is a free, uh, you know, tool which is available from Microsoft. You can download. Only thing is that you need to, uh, you know, configure these things in JSON file of launch and task appropriately by downloading some more uh, you know programs or the compilers like you know gcc or g++ debuggers etc and uh, you can you can get them uh, the extensions for instance these are the extensions you can install whichever is required for example for c or c++ uh, the debugging kind of thing we need uh, this so you can see so when I click this, you can see it's already installed. Otherwise, so you can only un uninstall. Since it's already installed, there's no need to do anything. So like this, Visual Studio Code actually works on the basis of these extensions and additional compilers which you have to download from some other website, etc., etc. So that I think you can Google it and you'll be able to get. So thanks for watching my lecture on the uh, application programs of various data structures. All these programs have been shown uh, using Visual Studio Code. However, it runs on any uh, good compiler, C or C++. Thank you.